All right, let's give an example of a scatter diagram. And I'm going to pick an example that compares the return on the stock market or the overall market of all invest investable assets with the return on an individual stock, let's say Apple Computer, <laughs> which I just picked because it's the biggest company in, in America. So, uh, so let me just draw on the horizontal axis the return on the market. That's everything you could invest in. Let's just imagine all stocks put together. And then on this axis, we're going to put the return of Apple. And each point represents one year. So let's pick a year uh, when the stock market went up. Uh, let's say uh, the market went up uh, 10%. Uh, and uh, what did Apple do in the same year? Uh, well, let's say it did 15%. Uh, so I, I make a point here that, that oops, <laughs> uh, a point above 10% and at 15% here. Okay? Uh, now, in some years, <coughs> the uh, market goes down. <laughs> let's not forget that. So here I'll say in, there was another year when the market did minus 5%. Okay, what did Apple do in that year? Well, let's say Apple did minus 10%. So I get a point down here. You see this? <laughs> this is minus 10, uh, and this is minus 5. Okay. So I have a point down here. Okay. And then I can fill in many years. Each year is a point. I'm, and this is a scatter of points. I've got a lot of years shown. And now, you, when you see this, and, and some of them are negative, <laughs> or, or close to zero, when you see the scatter of points, you say, well, I, I'm starting to see a relationship here, that th there's an upward sloping relation, there's a positive relation between Apple and the market. And I can draw a line that's the best fitting line through the scatter of points, so that uh, it, it kind of gets as close as it can to the scatter of points. That's called a regression line. And the slope of the line is called its beta. Okay. If it has a slope of 1, that means uh, the re stock is reacting 1 for 1 with the market. Yeah. But in the case of Apple, the beta uh, is about 1.5. It's greater than 1. Okay. The, the typical stock will just go 1 for 1 with the market. But this is a high beta stock. So it's reacting more strongly to the market. I see. And so, I see. So then the 1.5 you can see as uh, if the return of the market goes up, the S&P 500 goes up 10%, then you should have 15% for Apple, which gives you the beta of 1.5 on average. Right. But it won't be exactly. It doesn't okay. fall exactly on the line. So, but there's, they, they differ from the line, and that's called idiosyncratic risk. It's not related to the market. I see. It's, it's Apple risk. So uh, the market could do great in one year, mm -hmm. and uh, Steve Jobs could get sick in that year. You know, right, it's just right. something. And so Apple didn't do well. Okay. Uh, that's idiosyncratic. The, the theory of the capital asset pricing model is that investors care more about beta than they do about idiosyncratic risk. Because okay. all those companies' idiosyncratic risk will average out and won't matter. Okay. What matters is the systematic risk, the risk that correlates with the market. Okay. And those things don't average out, no matter how many stocks you put in your portfolio. I see. And it, so is there any particular um, reason why some company X would have a high beta versus another company having a lower beta? Well, I think one reason, th there may be many reasons, okay. <laughs> not just the, uh, uh, th th this theory doesn't tell you why. Okay. I'm just adding some thoughts on that. Right. One reason why Apple Computer might be a high beta stock is that it, uh, it takes, um, it invests in projects that are iffy. Okay. 
uh, that nobody's done before, uh, and uh, their success depends on the state of the economy. So if they launch a new iPhone at a time of a severe recession, they're not going to do well. And uh, the, the other thing that can make for a high beta stock is that the company borrows a lot of money. Uh, and then they're playing on the edge because they, they, they have to make a lot of money or they'll go bankrupt because they've borrowed so much. Apple is not in that category. Apple has not borrowed a lot of money. It has, in fact, a lot of saving. Okay. That, that's something that brings its beta down. But Apple is such a lively company and so connected with what happens that their beta is still 1.5. I see. And so then a counterexample to this might be if there's a, a very low beta stock. So that would kind of look like a, um, either a, a lower slope or even a negative slope. Right, right. Okay. So for example, gold might in many cases be a negative beta stock. Okay. Why is that? Because when the stock market crashes, people panic and they get upset and they want to hold something very safe. Uh, at least gold is always safe in one sense. It stays gold <laughs> no, longer, no matter what happens. It's, and it's also a, uh, something that you can run with. You know, if you think that you're going to be a refugee, I want something I can stash in my purse and just get out of here. Okay. Gold has that aspect. So it's some psychological that, okay. that uh, at least in some time periods, it looks like a negative beta asset. Okay. So I think, uh, and then that would look like this. You have a, uh, a, a scatter diagram that looks like that. It's backwards. I see. And you fit a line, and it has a negative slope going down I see. rather than up. OK. So that means that uh, when the market is doing well, when the economy is doing well, uh, gold might not necessarily be a great option uh, in terms of returns. But then when we have a recession, that's when you see returns highest for gold. So, Yeah, and, and uh, when constructing a portfolio, it matters. Negative beta stocks help you in a different way. Maybe their return isn't so good right. on average, but they help offset market shocks. So you like to have other things equal. You like to have negative beta stocks in your portfolio. As long as their return isn't so bad as to <laughs> offset the uh, advantage of their beta.